What is up guys and welcome back to another WWE Top 10 Facts. In today's episode we have one of my favorite women wrestlers of all time and that's Lita. Let's get straight onto the list. Number 10, Life After Retirement. What did Lita do after retiring from wrestling? Lita decided it was time to go back to her other love, punk rock, creating a band called The Lucha Gores. They released an album and toured throughout America and Europe several times. Another thing she did was start Adore, a non-profit organization that supports many different animal organizations. Recently, she purchased a house in Nicaragua and has done a lot of charity work there. Number 9. Returned to WWE as a road agent and writer After a long break from the WWE, Lita decided to make a return. Her official return was on the 1000th episode of Raw in 2012 when she defeated Heath Slater. She was later inducted into the Hall of Fame of 2014, and finally she was a tough enough trainer in 2015. And since October 2015, Lita has been working full time as a road agent and writer for the women's division. Remember October, the WWE decided to revamp the whole women's division and get away from meaningless two minute matches and began building real characters? Coincidence? I think not. Number 8, returning to the beginning one last time. In 2006, Lita surprisingly retired from the WWE. Many rumors broke out, but it wasn't because she was unhappy with her heel character. She felt like she accomplished everything and declined a new offer. One of the last things Lita did with the WWE before her retirement was a house show tour of Mexico. The show took place in Mexico City and she wore a lucha mask so nobody would recognize her. She went to the Arena Mexico and fought there for one last time. What a great way to end a career. Number 7, Nearly Getting Paralyzed Lita has put her body on the line night after night, but her first serious injury happened on a TV set. Lita got the role of a villain in the 2002 series finale of Dark Angel, the James Cameron show starring Jessica Alba. There was a huge fight scene between Lita and Jessica Alba's character who was a stunt double. Unfortunately, Alba's stunt double didn't know anything about wrestling, so as soon as Lita tried to practice a her karana, she dropped her on her head. Everybody talks about how bad WWE's medical staff is, but according to Lita, this was much worse. Lita said nobody, including the director James Cameron, took her injury serious and didn't try to help, even though they saw her massive amount of pain and her left arm and hand were not moving. The TV crew continued to film through days of shooting with the assistants having to help Lita. Somehow Lita powered through all of this and finished the film, only finding out after that her neck was broken in three different places and a sneeze could have paralyzed her. Number 6 Pee Wee Herman Inspiration Lita's family moved around a lot due to her father's job. Before finally settling in the Atlanta area, Lita's true loves were Punk Rock and Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman was the inspiration to her first ever extreme stunt. After watching Pee Wee's big adventure, young Lita decided she wanted to redo the memorable bike trick scene. This one right here. Sometimes kids aren't so smart at making decisions. So Lita went flying and ended up getting scraped up more than Pee Wee did in the movie. If it wasn't for this first bump, who knows if Lita would have ever made it to the WWE. Number 5, Actually Being Naked During the Live Sex Celebration In 2005, crazy news broke out about Lita, Matt Hardy, and Edge. Lita cheated on Matt Hardy with Edge while Hardy was away with an injury. The WWE decided to capitalize on the situation by turning Lita heel and managing Edge. I would have felt pretty awkward, but Lita did the opposite and embraced herself as a heel. Her and Edge became a huge draw. Their success hit the peak with the infamous live sex celebration, which pulled a 5.2 rating. The WWE hasn't seen these numbers since the Attitude Era. If you missed it, let me recite what happened. After Edge defeated John Cena for the title, Edge promised he and Lita would have sex live on Raw. Of course, nothing actually happened. Lita and Edge hid under the covers and moved around a bit to simulate sex, but Vince McMahon had a different idea. According to Lita, Vince wanted her to be completely naked under the sheets. He wanted the most realistic sex celebration ever. Lita said no to Vince's idea, but how could he be mad after a 5.2 rating? Number 4, when did she find out her name? After her run in Mexico, she took her talents to the US indie scene for a little. She trained in Chicago and wrestled in the Mid-Atlantic Territory, where she would meet some daredevil rednecks named Jeff and Matt Hardy. Jim Ross would receive a tape of her wrestling and he hired her immediately. She was put on TV as soon as possible. Although Jim Ross saw her as a huge deal, the creative team weren't really interested. 
so they paired it with the Mexican wrestler who was known in the WWF as Papi Chulo. They were both set to receive new names, but none of them knew what it was. When they made their debut in early 2000 on Sunday Night Heat, they came out with no introductions, graphics, or the slightest idea of what their new names were. Only later, when watching her debut on TV, did Amy find out her name was Alita. At first, she hated it, but now it's one of the most popular woman names in the business. Number 3, Winning Record Against the Attitude Era Legends Lita spent a lot of her time fighting with the guys during the Attitude Era. In 2000 and 2001, she had many matches against women like Stephanie McMahon and Trish Stratus, but always teamed with the Hardys to take on guys like Stone Cold, The Rock, Triple H, Edge, Christian, and the Dudleys in intergender brawls. Team Extreme won a lot of these matches, which means Lita has a good record anyone would love to have. She has wins over Triple H, Stone Cold, Big Show, and Kurt Angle. If you were a wrestler in the early 2000s, you probably received a Lita Moonsault and a pinfall at least once. Number 2, Help from Stone Cold If you ever need somebody to help break you out of a hospital, Stone Cold's your guy. Lita had a very serious decision to make. The doctor she had gone to wanted to perform surgery that would have her retired from wrestling forever. Lita wanted to see her other options, and she needed advice. She called none other than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin had suffered with neck issues of his own. He managed to talk to the doctors who were not allowing her to leave the hospitals. Austin then said she should go see Dr. Youngblood in San Antonio. He even went out to buy her a plane ticket. Youngblood? who had performed Austin surgery, proposed a less severe surgery that wouldn't involve retirement. Lita decided to have surgery with Dr. Youngblood. After the surgery, she would have to make visits to San Antonio for checkups. Austin would let her crash at his house for these visits. And number one, she was inspired by Rey Mysterio. Lita wasn't interested in wrestling until the late 90s when she began dating a wrestling fan. Her boyfriend at the time was a huge WCW fan. And at first, Lita thought, Oh, sweaty guys fake wrestling was stupid, blah blah blah. Anyways, Lita's opinion changed in a big way when she first saw a wrestler that she found interesting. His name was Rey Mysterio Jr. She would soon enjoy all of WCW's Mexican wrestlers and just like that, she fell in love. What's the next step? Buy a plane ticket to Mexico City and find where all the wrestlers are. She would make her way to Arena Mexico, which was Mexico's top wrestling promotion, CMLL. Lita went to every show, trying to figure out how to get trained. One problem was a language issue that kept her from making progress. Eventually, Lita became friends with the American guys working in Mexico. They taught her a few basic moves and bumps, and this was the beginning of Lita's journey. As always, thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you all enjoyed, if you did, leave a like, subscribe for more, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at WWEplana, got some great stuff there, also check out my other channel, Official Life Facts. Take care and spike your hair.